Hey guys, welcome to a vlog on the IRL channel. I know it's been a few days since I have uploaded one and I am so sorry for that. Um, just a quick update. I haven't really been feeling well since I've been back from Mexico. Um, I just am really tired all the time and um, I also have been going to a chiropractor for my back because my back's also been way more sore since I got back than it has been for a really long time. Turns out I really messed up my back. It's been injured for about 10 years and I amplified it pretty bad uh, just with all the traveling and stuff I've been doing. So I've been going to a chiropractor every other day since then and just with work and everything else um, and being tired, you can tell, don't I look beautiful, <laughs> um, that uh, I've just not really been doing much. I've just been taking care of Boo, coming home, and that's pretty much it. So nothing has been too exciting to vlog, but on to happier notes. Uh, I did want to talk about a story that happened yesterday. Um, it was just something that was really nice to see, and so I wanted to kind of share that with you guys as a parent. It was one of those moments that was really cool to see, and as someone who wasn't really exposed to a lot of that this type of situation um, at all while I was growing up, um, it's just really nice and refreshing to see. So Boo and I were out having dinner um, the other day. She's had conferences and things with her school this week, so um, we were going to go out to dinner before we had to, to run to an appointment. So we stopped at a little cafe and we were eating, and in the booth next to us, we were sat at a table and chair, and in the booth next to us, uh, there was a teenage, I'm going to put her probably 16, 17, uh, in the booth, and then she was sitting across from a guy, um, and then there was, like, another guy that came and joined them, like, you know, right into her and I eating our food, um, and so just to kind of, like, set the scene for you, I don't know, I'm going to use probably the wrong terminology because I'm old and because I don't, like, I don't know, like, what the proper classification is, um, because I also did not grow up with anybody that kind of fell into this genre, but they were kind of, like, punk emo-ish, um, he had on dark gray jeans, he had on like a black beanie, kind of like longer hair, black gray shirt kind of thing. She had, um, I mean, she looked, I mean, it was like a really cute outfit, I would have worn it jeans. I think she was wearing like combat boots and just like a cute regular shirt, whatever. Um, but she kind of had like an edgier look to her as well. And then the guy that came and joined them must have just gotten off of work. He was wearing like khakis and a like white collared shirt. Um, but they seemed to be pretty good friends. So naturally, you know, the assumption is, is that the three of them are in a group and, you know, they're, they're friends. I don't know if the guy and the girl were dating, but they all seem to know each other pretty well. And so, you know, Boo's kind of looking around and she's not really paying attention. And so her and I are talking, we're having, you know, interactions. And then a, a little bit later, maybe 15 minutes into us eating dinner, um, two more people come and join this group of table two more, two more guys, um, and they kind of all cram into this booth in the restaurant together, which was really, you know, fun to see. It's fun to see, like, a group of friends all coming together and, like, cramming in and having a good time, but the guy that was originally there with, like, the jeans and the hat, um, one of the guys sits down next to him and instantly puts his, drapes his legs over, um, his lap, and they're, like, snuggling, and they're holding hands, and it was just super adorable to see them just very happy, and you could tell that, you know, they were dating, and they were involved together, and it, it was not shocking to me, because I have grown up, I have gay friends, like, that doesn't shock me, but I haven't been exposed in, like, my, kind of small town suburbia where I am and when I was in high school I, anyone who was gay was was not very they didn't talk about it it was very much like don't ask don't tell we didn't have anybody that I know of in our school that was gay that ever brought someone of the same sex to like a prom or anything like that um you could kind of tell um, and then, like, now the people that I was like, I think they're gay when I was in high school, like, now they are, you know, out um, and they're gay, which is great to see that they're, you know, living their life very openly. 
but I wasn't exposed to that like where I live. It's not common. Um, it's very conservative here. I think people are kind and they would be open minded. It's just not anything that I was ever exposed to. So here I am, you know, in the place that I grew up and here is a very openly gay couple. And it was awesome to see. In my opinion, I was like, oh, thank you. Like people feel comfortable being themselves in this town. And it's not something that what people that I was in high school with are dealing with now where they feel like they have to kind of suppress that or not talk about it or hide that, um, that, you know, these kids, you know, kids, high schoolers are able to do that and they're able to express themselves and they're able to do it publicly as well and feel like, you know, their friends are supportive. So it was really awesome for me to see and I was just like, kind of had this like really happy, like, oh, that's so awesome. Like, I'm so proud of them. And, you know, I'm not like a weirdo. I'm not going to like go say anything to them. But, you know, I had this kind of moment internally where I was just really excited to see that kind of the culture where I live has has changed. Um, so it was nice to see. So then as a parent, you, you know, you always kind of have these, these teaching moments where, you know, your, your kids don't, they're not, they don't understand when they're little, you know, they, they know that I have a mom and I have a dad. And as far as Boo is aware, there's no one that she is friends with that have two moms or two dads. Um, you know, the most uncommon thing is, you know, the fact that her mom lives by herself and her dad lives by himself. And that to her is not normal because um, most of her friends, even if they have step parents, they have, you know, a boy and a girl that live together and a boy and a girl that live together. Um, and so she, you know, she came over and she whispers in my ear and she says, Mommy, that boy, he's wearing nail polish. He had like black nail polish on. And I was like, I know, isn't that cool? His nail polish is really pretty. And she has black and orange nail polish on her toes. And I was like, it's just like yours. Isn't that awesome? And she was like, they're holding hands. And I was like, I know, isn't that really cool? Like, that's so awesome. Um, and so it was nice to be able to very casually and very, in, like, not formal, but in, like, a real-life situation, be able to encourage that behavior with her and like express to her that that is very normal um because we we don't have that we do have some really close friends of ours um that are gay they're two lesbians and they're not um they don't have a lot of pda they they walk in together so i think for for boo because there's no physical distinction between them being friends and what she thinks that like um you know holding hands or things that I would do with her that would show affection you know kiss her on the cheek whatever she doesn't see that and so I think it's harder for her to like understand that they're in a relationship um and so this is the first time really that she's ever been exposed to a same-sex couple that were being very affectionate towards each other and it was it was really nice to be able to as a parent say like no this is isn't that wonderful it's so good like look how happy they are and we've talked about it before um she has had little kids at school tell her you know oh we're gonna play house and you know it's another little girl I'm gonna be the mom and well you can't be the mom because we need a boy and so we've had these conversations at home where it's like no you know a boy can love a boy and a girl can love a girl and, you know, a girl can love a boy or, you know, whatever. You can love both. Like, it's okay. Um, and so I, I think it was the first time that she was ever able to actually see that, like, in real life and in our own, like, town because we're not exposed to these things on the regular basis. And we don't have a lot of examples to show her or for her to really understand. And we've said, you know, that, you know, our family friends like, oh, they're, well, they're married and, you know, isn't that cool? Like they can be married. And so when, you know, it became legal for same-sex couples to be married across the United States, we had kind of a very brief conversation about, you know, isn't it great that if you're a boy, you can marry a boy, and if you're a girl, you can marry a girl, and you can love whoever you want, and isn't that so exciting? And you can just love everybody. Um, and so, I don't know, it was just, it was something that I, I'm happy with, I'm proud, and I, from when I was in high school, is very different, because when I, like I said, when I was in high school, and I get, I'm old, you know, I graduated high school 10 years ago, we didn't have that, and it's so nice to see that the same community that I was in high school in 10 years ago is shifting to where that, you know, being open-minded and not being afraid to express 
your, you know, whether it's you, you fall outside of, you know, if you're gender fluid or if you're transgender or if you are, you know, gay or whatever, it's nice to see that those types of things are being embraced by the community and people don't feel like they have to hide that. Um, and it's great knowing that there are going to be examples that in my own very, I would consider it very conservative type place, that my own daughter has the ability to be exposed to that because I wasn't. And even in the last couple of years, I know that I've talked to a lot of my friends and, and asked them very point blank, like, explain to me what your life was like because I don't get it because I've never asked those questions. I've never known anyone that, you know, had to deal with that period of coming out while we were in high school or dealing with, you know, that anxiety of feeling like it wasn't okay for you to be who you were. And I've talked to my friends about it because I feel like you shouldn't be ignorant to those things. You should understand what life is like for people who are different from you. You should be able to embrace their situations and you should be able to, even if it's not something that you are familiar with, you should at least try to familiarize yourself with these situations and not be ignorant. You should learn what people's struggles are so that you can help them or be there for them or understand them and to know that she's not going to face the same things that I did when I was, you know, 22, 23, 24, where like I had never like known anyone that was gay. I didn't know, I didn't have gay friends or know anyone that was gay until I was late into my 20s, um, 23. 6, 27, that, like, I knew personally um, that I would consider, you know, a friend that I had a close enough relationship to be able to ask them, like, what is your life like? Um, and I, I remember being, I guess I was 26 and meeting a, a girl that I used to work with and she was getting married and I was like, oh, what does your husband do? And she was like, you mean my wife? And I was like, what? She was like, my wife, I'm getting married to a woman. And I was like, yeah, but you can't do that in Missouri. And that was like just this eye-opening thing. And I was 26, like how terrible is that? That at 26 years old, you have no idea what what somebody else's situation is like and to instinctively be like, oh, well, she's gonna marry a man. Like it's it's nice to know that my daughter may not have that same situation and that she will grow up in an environment that is much more open-minded and as a parent I'm able to I don't I don't want to say normalize as if those things aren't normal but to be able to show her and to support that type of um lifestyle and to be able to say like it's okay like if you grow up to love a woman it's okay and love is great and love is wonderful and we should embrace that and to have real life examples to be able to show her yes it's okay if that boy wants to wear fingernail polish and it's okay if that boy wants to have a boyfriend like isn't it great isn't it wonderful that that they're happy and and to make it about the feeling and not about what it is I don't know if that makes sense and I hope I haven't offended anyone and if I have I apologize because that was definitely not the intention I hope you guys know that like I hope you understand that to me this is I'm proud and I am excited and I embrace the fact that these types of things are coming up because I didn't have that when when I was growing up and to be able to tell her that I support this and that it's wonderful and, and great and no matter what type of situation you're in as long as you're happy and you're able to love someone and, and be loved, that's the important part. So I don't know. It was just something that I wanted to share um, because it was really eye op not eye opening. Like I feel like that makes me sound so close minded. It's it's not that. I just if anyone out there has like grown up with really like a conservative background or in a conservative city or grown up very sheltered, I I would consider myself having grown up being sheltered. Um, hopefully you guys kind of understand what I'm trying to say and that it makes sense. Um, and hopefully I did the right thing. If I, if there's something that I can be saying to be an ally that, that helps her, please let me know in the comments below. Like I want to be as much of an advocate as I can, regardless of whether, you know, she grows up to be straight or gay or whatever. Um, I, I would love for, even if she grows up and she decides to be in straight relationships, for her to, to be very open and accepting. So, I don't know, if you guys have advice, I'm open, I'm all ears. 
Um, I want to make sure that, you know, we're raising the next generation of people to be loving and accepting and kind and break, you know, the, the pattern of bullying and, and poor behavior that seems to have occurred, you know, back when I was in school, because that sucks and is terrible, and I don't think anyone should have to feel ashamed of who they are. So, um, yeah, I hope that this was an okay vlog coming back for the first time. Sorry that I look like a hot mess, but hopefully my stories of love and encouragement make up for that. Um, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you soon.